This is the Sigma 18 to 35. Now I have this on my A6000 right now, so you can kind of see the size comparison. This lens is pretty huge compared to the A6000. And it's also much heavier than the A6000. It's like probably three times the weight, honestly. However, this lens is definitely worth the size and weight because of just how sharp and how good it is. Now, one thing to note real quick, two of the lenses on this list are going to require a Sony E-mount to Canon EF lens adapter. I use the Sigma MC11. This is my favorite adapter. I'll link it down in the description if you want to check it out but you can pretty much use any Sony E-mount to Canon EF lens adapter. Just make sure that wherever you buy it from, it says it supports autofocus and has these electronic contacts in it. So the Sigma 18 to 35, this is of course an 18 to 35 millimeter lens. So pretty much covers that range of semi wide angle all the way to, you know, somewhat telephoto around the 50 millimeter equivalent field of view. So because of that, this is pretty much the perfect like do it all lens, you know, for walking around doing like street photography, you know, even some portraits if you zoom all the way into 35 millimeter, it has really good background separation, especially being that this is a constant f1.8 aperture. So whether you are 18 or 35 or anywhere in between, it's going to always be able to stay at f1.8. But that's also the reason why it's so heavy and big, because it has to fit so much glass inside of it to keep the f1.8 aperture. Like I said, this is one of my favorite lenses to use, because you can pretty much use this for everything, and it's tack sharp, and there's really not anything else bad to say about this. It supports autofocus. It doesn't have stabilization built into it. However, that's not a super big deal because it is more of a wider angle lens, so it's not as important to have stabilization. So if you record videos, it'll be a little bit shaky unless you're on a tripod or a gimbal. And then for photos, you'll have to up your shutter speed just a little bit so you don't get any shaky photos. But either way, that's lens number one. Like I said, that's kind of how it looks like on the camera. It's definitely pretty front heavy with the A6000. You know, if you're taking this on long hikes, it might kind of be a little hefty for you. But if you can handle the size and weight of this, it is a fantastic lens. It's basically like a bunch of different prime lenses built in one because of how fast the aperture is. Then the last thing to bring up about this lens is of course the price. Now I'm going to link all these lenses down below in the description if you want to check the updated prices because prices kind of switch around. However, this lens new is right around $700. So it's a pretty hefty price tag on this as well. You can get it used for cheaper, but if you want this new, it's about $700. So you know what they say, marry your lens, date your camera. Cameras are coming out every single year. You can always get a new camera body, but lenses pretty much last forever if you take care of them well. And also stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. I have lots of videos about the Sony A6000 and about a bunch of other budget cameras, budget lenses, budget camera gear, anything like that. That's pretty much what I base my channel around. So if you're interested in that, don't hesitate to go down to the like button and subscribe to my channel. And that wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.